I'm Grant Ludlow and this is my first vlog. I have always documented my sessions by taking notes and lots of photographs. I've made videos in the past that friends and family have seen but I've never uploaded them to YouTube for the public to watch. It is now the end of the August bank holiday weekend. The lake should potentially be empty as everyone would have left this morning. We have three nights ahead of us leading up to the blue supermoon. There's a slight drop in air pressure and a strong westerly wind that the fish should follow. Let's go and see if we can find them. Arriving at the lake for 6pm and finding a lot of the fish where we expected them to be in the top half of the lake. We opted to fish pegs 57, 58 and 59. These swims meant that we could work as a team to create content for Instagram and YouTube whilst having a social and a laugh at the same time. We got everything set up and organised. Finding firm gravel areas at 13 wraps in 6 foot of water to present a lot of bait on whilst putting out a good starting point of 40 to 50 spots of hemp, maize, groats, buckwheat 12 mil boilies, 18 mil boilies, all mixed together and keeping the bait in as tight as possible to a marker float in the dark. All three rods are now out at 13 wraps. I'm using back leads to help keep the lines pinned down for playing fish in shallow water. The whole of the first day we filmed videos for TikTok and Instagram where I landed 13 carp to 24 pound 12 ounces. Making sure to keep the spot topped up with bait is a big part of keeping the bites coming. You fucking twat. I know there's going to be a lot of people that will think I'm not sitting here watching him spotting all day long but I'm showing people how hard you actually have to work if you want to get bites. It might be a runs water with 7,000 carp in, but it's still not easy. If you just throw out three rods and sit down in your tent, you probably will blank. It's 22 acres in size, and if you're not on the fish, you have to make the fish come to you 
by ringing that dinner bell and let them know where the food is. I wanted to leave it as one continuous video to prove that ringing the dinner bell actually works on the right venues. And I really wanted it to be a real life video, like an in session piece, because anybody can record loads of footage and crop and edit it together to make it look like they're getting loads of bites during the day. But I didn't want that. I want you to actually see what's happening when I'm there. After working hard to get bites all day long and not eating breakfast or lunch, I stopped spodding over the top of the rods and we had a good social with a barbecue. We made a plan for the next day to record enough content for my first YouTube vlog. Everything that you've seen already in this video wasn't even going to be added in, but I've added it in anyway so you can see the action that we had on the first day. There is nothing at all on the rule board at the entrance of the fishery but I was told after this video footage was recorded by a bailiff that the bailiffs don't want people in the water because of the deep margins in some of the swims. I apologised to the bailiff and explained that I was only in the water up to my knees because of how shallow the swim is. Fish safety will always come first and it's impossible to net the fish from the swim without being in wellies or waders because you'll damage the fish by dragging it up onto the gravel. All footage was recorded before I knew about the no wading rule. If you plan on going to willows, please have wellies or waders for netting the fish to keep the fish in good condition. At the start of my session I will always use my marker rod to find the correct spot I want to fish in my chosen swim. On this session 
It is a firm gravel area at 13 wraps. Picking the horizon marker on the far bank and always making sure to stand in the same place to cast helps keep everything accurate as the session goes on. I then wrap up my spud rod to 13 wraps as well, standing back in the same place I cast the marker float from and I cast out the spot. The spot should land behind the float because the lead has swung back under the water on the marker rod. The change in depth will determine how much the lead swings back towards you. I then simply unclip the braid from the reel, reeling the spot back slowly on the surface until it is in line with the marker float and then I re-clip it. Now the spod will land over the top of your fishing rods for the rest of your session. A lot of people still don't use distance sticks correctly. I always drop the lead to my left hand side and I wrap with the bail arm open and the line pinched between my finger and the rod wrapping in a figure of eight, going over the wrap sticks every time with the rod tip. Once I reach 13 wraps, I stop, I put the line inside the line clip on the reel and I reel it in with the rod in the air with the line pinched between my fingers. One 12 foot wrap is 4 yards, so now I know that I am fishing 52 yards away from the bank. When you cast the rigs out they will land just behind the float, but with the swing back of the lid it will be landing in the same place as your baited area.
the bream had found the bait already. So it means re-wrapping up the rod again, checking the hook point, changing the hook if you need to, and making sure you get it straight back out there in the right position. You have to make sure that you keep the bait topped up. If you have caught one bream it wouldn't have been the only one out there on its own. There will be more. So you have to make sure that you keep the bait going in and try and either feed them off or attract the carp to come in and push them out of the way. Another bream already means we have to rewrap the rod again, check the hook point, and get the rig back out there. Finally, the first carp of the day is in the net. It's important to get your rods wrapped up, change your hooks and get them rigs back out on the spot quickly to make the most of the feed-in situation that you have in front of you. The fish that you have in the nets are perfectly fine in the water, they're unhooked and they're recovering in the nets while you get your rods back out. And then if you want to have pictures and weigh them or whatever, you can deal that up once your rods are back in the water. Later on in this video you'll see how quickly the bites can come and you need to make sure that you get all the rigs back out on the spot 
so that you don't miss the chance of another bite. I won't bore you any more with this video of me wrapping up my rods but you get the idea that you have to wrap your rods continuously every time you recast them out. Like I said earlier, no one wants to watch anyone spodding, but when I tell people that I spod all day long, they genuinely don't believe me. And in this video, I'm just proving how hard I work when I'm at the lake to make the next bite happen. If you look closely at the people fishing in the swims opposite me, throughout this video, you will see that they're not working their swim at all. I haven't seen them put any bait out at all all day long and I don't think they caught a fish the whole time when we've been catching. Yeah. 
got catch a carp disease. I had four bream constantly on the middle rod and uh, I thought that the other two on the left and right either side wasn't close enough to the bait because I didn't have anything on them rods at all so uh, I left the rod in after the last bream and I was going to reel them all in and re-chuck them all at the same time make sure they was all tight and then out of the blue, the middle, uh, the right hand rod just screams off. And we've got one of the, one of the bigger commons from Willows in the net. Well happy of that. We'll weigh it now and see what it weighs. After the last bream, I stopped the camera recording and I forgot to turn it back on so we missed the take from this common. According to the bailiff this is a known fish, one of the biggest commons in the lake that normally goes over 30 pound but at the moment she is down in weight at 25 pound 12 ounces. A proper character fish that must have a story to tell. It's got some bits missing on its dorsal fin, it's had an attack on its tail it's a proper lovely common. I was well happy to catch it. I think this is the video that started the topic of the waders. I am actually sat on my knees with my bum on my feet in about a foot and a half of water. As much as it looks like I am standing up waist height you can see me switch over to my knee in a minute and let the fish go. The common was carp number 16 for me so far of this session and it's about to get a little bit crazy.
Pringles and Captain Morgan and free cans in. <laughs> Mission! After rewrapping the rod and putting a new hook on, the middle rod was away before I've even cast out the right hand rod. This place is absolute chaos. When you get them going and just keep the bait going in, 
I reeled all three in earlier and just put loads of bait out again. Put all three out, had two bream straight away, and then I had a carp. Now I've just had three in a row. I've got one in this net here. Only a little one. I've got a common in this net here. And then I did have one in this net here. And then the rod went off. Now I've got two in there. Got four fish in nets. And one rod left out on the spot. I need to get rid of these fish before I put them rods back out get them all gone what a day I must be at 20 fish now I think At this point, I'm now completely out of particle other than a five kilo bag of maize. I had three black buckets full of particle and I've used them all. I just walked up and got out to buy another ticket. Just been buying 24 hour tickets at a time. Came back, put all three rods out again, put five spots of just 12 mil boilies and maize with cream smart liquid over the top. And uh, had one rod go, literally netted it. And as I was in the water netting it, the other rod's gone. One rod left. Got a common in that one.
I dealt with all three of these fish, photographing them and doing the carp care and uh, I released them back and then I left my rods in to take over cooking on the barbecue whilst Dean caught a couple of fish. After having another really nice barbecue, I decided to get all three rods back out. I used the last bit of the maize that I had left and I mixed it with some 12 mil pineapple nut boilies from Raisbury Baits. And then I mixed it with half a bottle of fruit smart liquid. And then I added some leg water so that it made it runny and it soaked into the maize. With all three rods now back out on the spot, it was time to ring the dinner bell again and let the carp know that the food was back out on the spot. I genuinely believe I would have caught a lot more if I didn't have to stop and eat. I have now been spotting for 12 hours since I woke up. 
and without spodding all day yesterday as well. Just 24 hours worth of spodding. I decided to call it a day and reel all three rods in, set my alarm for 6 o'clock in the morning and get some well deserved sleep. I spotted out the last bit of maize and boilies that I had left in the bucket so that I could clean all my buckets out before going home. I had nothing but bream all morning. I think I stopped counting when I got to 12. I think the wind had stopped and uh, the carp had moved off. I didn't have one carp on the last morning. So that was the end of my session. I ended up with 30 takes, landing 28 carp to 25 pound. I had 20 plus bream as well in between that.
Dean landed 10 carp to over 20 pound with multiple bream and a 28 pound catfish. Graham also landed 10 carp with multiple bream. As a group we landed over 50 carp, 30 bream and a couple of catfish. Smile then. Now yeah, splash it a little bit with some clean water. And a, and a rabbit. We're going here, huh? 